Uh, hello everyone and welcome to Nominal Ledger video lecture uh, number two. Uh, today we're going to do a, uh, a case study. Okay, we're going to do a case study. Maybe I'll just write that down. We're going to do a case study uh, uh, to follow on from our previous video lecture. Uh, a case study uh, doing the, the Nominal Ledger uh, and it's going to be a case study for a, for a sole trader. Okay, for a sole trader and it's going to be a startup situation so a new business so a, a startup okay before we go into it uh, maybe we just uh, quickly review um, just uh, the various stages that we'd be, we'd be following as we prepare um, the, the nominal ledger uh, you know for for this particular case study so we're going to start off the situation okay the first step in the process if you like this is our process of accounting the first the first step that we'll be looking at will be a summary of the books okay a summary of the books so this is um all the various books that we, we discussed uh, in our last uh, video lecture the sales book purchases book payments book cash receipts book and so on we'll be looking at uh, the summary of those books which 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 um, tell us what the transactions were during the first year in this particular business okay so a summary of the books okay uh, okay so that's what we'll be that's the information that we will be using okay uh, in uh, to, to prepare uh, the, the nominal ledger and so on for this for this particular business so what are we going to do uh, then okay the next step normally is uh, that we will look at uh, what we call an opening trial balance. We said that, that was the next step, uh, an opening uh, trial balance. And an opening trial balance uh, tells us what the, the balances of all the various assets and liabilities were at the end of the previous year. And of course, because it's a startup, there's no previous year. So all in our particular, in, in this example today, there's effectively no opening trial balance. All the balances would be zero. So in this case, this, this stage in the process is, is redundant really. So we can go straight on, okay, to put all these summary of the books, which are essentially is a summary of all our transactions. We're going to put it, we're going to prepare the nominal ledger itself. Okay, the nominal ledger. And we know what the nominal ledger, we, we, we described it in our previous uh, video lecture, the nominal ledger is just just collection of T accounts, okay, where accountants do all their calculations of the figures in the profit and loss account and balance sheet. So each, each figure in the profit and loss account and balance sheet that we're eventually going to end up with uh, will, will be calculated in a particular T account, will have its own T account in the nominal ledger. And once we're finished then, uh, balancing off the nominal ledger, figuring out we're going to get one single figure for each of the T accounts. When we're finished that, we'll check and see did we make any errors, okay? And we'll make a list of all the balances, etc., of all these figures, uh, one for each T account, and we'll do a closing trial balance, okay? A closing trial balance, so that's what we're going to do okay a closing trial balance and um, again we have a, a figure in this closing trial balance for every asset every liability every expense and every revenue that we're going to have and i'll just move on just a little bit here and the next step I'll just go down a little and the next step after the the closing balance then well we might have some adjustments to make some accounting adjustments there won't be many in this example but that's what we would normally do so accounting uh, adjustments and this might be an adjustment uh, for uh, depreciation or closing stock or there's other adjustments as well uh, that we may may come across okay uh, we'll see how, how that goes so we might make some small adjustments then to the figures and once we have those adjustments done then we can prepare the final accounts and i think we'll, we'll, we'll carry on and do the full we'll do it right up until the uh, the final accounts the financial statements if you like of the business uh, the final accounts for the, the first year uh, in business or the financial statements whatever you like to call it. so so there are the stages so we're going to be presented with this this information about you know a list really would be given a list of all the transactions that this particular sole trader entered into in the first year in business 
okay and then we're going to skip this this stage here the opening trial balance because there's no previous year there's no opening balances and we go straight in and we'll be putting these transactions into our nominal ledger and we know how we we, we talked about how to do that in our previous video lecture so we'll, we'll do do it in, in that particular way uh, and then once we've done that we'll balance off all the t accounts uh, figure out what the closing balances are list them in this sorry a closing balance here to be closing trial balance so I just uh, correct that okay so a closing trial balance and we'll see what that looks like not a very important document it's just really a check to see do we make a mistake here uh, in any of our calculations in the nominal ledger but once we have that we have we've all the figures that we're going to put into our final accounts and as i said we may adjust some of them and uh, then we'll just do the p and l and the balance sheet down here the profit and loss account and the, and the balance sheet okay so that's that's the story so let's have a look then and see what the summary of the books looks like now and i have it over here i pre-prepared it or i prepared it rather in advance okay and here it is okay a burst of red and uh, so the um the, the 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 case study we're doing involves this person this uh, uh brenda smith and uh, she's a sole trader she hasn't decided not to form a limited company but she commenced in business on the 1st of december 2019 uh, so in your unusual date so our accounts uh, for the first year will start on the 1st of December 19 and end on the 30th of November of the following year 2020 which is okay on that date then uh, on the first day of her business she lodged 130,000 of our savings into the business bank account so that's the first transaction that the business has okay the first transaction is the transaction between the owner and the business uh, and she's investing money and of course we know that as a result the business will owe the owner uh, back that money we call that capital okay so that's our first transaction and then here's a list of other very common transactions of any business and uh, so we read what it says during the year ended 30th of november 2020 the following transactions occurred so so there they are there a list of the transactions that occurred a summary of the transactions so here's our summary the first stage in the, in the process that i've listed there a minute ago so uh, we purchase of equipment so uh, the business bought uh, some equipment paid for it uh, for 160,000. Uh, so that's one transaction okay uh, so we've got to put that transaction into the nominal ledger and we'll see how it we we know of course that when we put any of these transactions into the nominal ledger there's going to be a debit effect and a credit effect so we're going to debit one figure in the nominal ledger and credit the other okay so that's what we're going so we'll see how that's done then the next transaction is a purchase of stock on credit so this is what we call purchases uh, 380,000 so that's a transaction so again we're going to put that in the nominal ledger debit one account credit another then she borrowed some money okay at some stage during the year for 140,000 okay so we put that in credit sales to customers 610,000 so these are sales of course that she makes the sale sends an invoice and then waits a period of time before she gets paid so okay so that's the the selling of the goods to customers and then there's some expenses uh, rent and rates were paid and uh, 90,000 and wages were paid for 150,000 so these are expenses and we'll see what to do with those the next transaction then cash received from our customers from our debtors 480,000 so we're going to have to work out how much the customers owe uh, at the end and it's, it's not that difficult of course it's just this 610 was was sold to them and uh, they paid uh, 480 so it's kind of uh, easy enough to uh, to work out how much they owe because there's no opening balance she didn't know the, the customers didn't know any money at the beginning of the year so that's straightforward enough to work out how much they owe and then payments to creditors for the stock again not too difficult there's the purchase of the stock and there's the payments uh, the payments in respect of that stock uh, so we know now how much Brenda Brenda's business will owe her suppliers easy enough to calculate okay the next uh, transaction we have is uh, drawings and this is money taken out of the business by the owner 
and we'll see how to deal with that uh, in the nominal ledger obviously she's going to take some money out of the business bank account uh, for her own personal use during the year it's just a kind of, it's a bit like a salary but of course it's not a salary or it's not wages because for wages or salaries to occur i suppose you need a contract of employment and a contract involves two people it's a legal contract between two people and of course there's no legal distinction between brenda and her business so you can't have a contract with yourself uh, so it's not a contract of employment so how do we deal with this so we deal with it as a as a repayment of capital i suppose a repayment of capital uh, that's how we that's how we're going to treat it okay uh, rather than as a, an expense so it's not an expense we're going to just reduce the capital by that amount of drawings and then there's two transactions uh, in relation to the loan remember there was a loan there of uh, 140,000 and we're told that the, the the lender whoever that was probably a bank or something uh, charged interest okay that's the charging of the interest uh, so we the banks add on interest onto the loan so that makes it 140 plus 9 149 and then we 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 have to take account of well what did she actually pay off the loan including the interest she paid 20,000 so that'll reduce the the loan balance so if you like the 20,000 9,000 goes to pay the interest and the, the, the balance or 11,000 uh, will be taken off the principal if that makes sense okay so let's uh, see is there any other so they're the transactions okay that's effectively there uh, the summary of the books okay the sum that's where we would have got that information the summary of the books of the business and it's a summary of the of the transactions i suppose because all the transactions were were entered into the books of the business as we saw okay some further bits of information that were, were told about this um about this business the first thing we're told is that at the end of the year some of this stock that that was purchased up here the purchase of stock three hundred eighty thousand. some of that was not paid on okay so, sorry some of that was not sold on to customers so of the 380 65,000 of that 38 that stock that cost 380,000 wasn't sold on and one of the rules of accounting is we don't include this part of the purchases as an expense this year we'll include it as an expense in the year that it was sold so we've got to make an adjustment and that'll be one of our accounting adjustments and we'll, we wait and do that in the profit and loss account we'll make that adjustment uh, in the in the profit and loss count when we're finished everything okay some other bits of information then all money received by the business is lodged to the business bank account okay well that's that's good because now we have an automatic record in the bank account i suppose if we're looking we'll see all our transactions all our cash transactions will go through you we can see them in the bank statements if you like to put it that way uh, so everything goes through the bank and that's i suppose good business practice here you'll you'll keep track easier i suppose of your your cash flows cash flows in and all payments then are also coming out of the bank either by some class of bank transfer or by check or even though checks are used less and less these days and a final uh, adjustment okay uh, uh, depreciation on the equipment where's the equipment up here uh, the equipment is 160,000. So we're going to, we, we were told that the depreciation on this is going to be 20% per annum based on the cost. So the cost is 160. So the depreciation we're going to calculate at 20% of the cost 160. And that's not a difficult calculation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that calculation in the nominal ledger. Okay, sometimes we do it after the nominal ledger is, is prepared. Uh, it might be just as an adjustment, but I think I, what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll open up a T account in the nominal ledger to, to calculate that depreciation. Essentially, depreciation is referred to as a provision. So we have a provision for depreciation. And a provision, we call it a provision for depreciation. And a, a provision, I suppose, is a reduction in the value of an asset for some reason. So this equipment that we purchased at the beginning of the year, let's say, is now we'll be looking at it at the end of the year and it's reduced in value through wear and tear or, or whatever through use and so we're going to reduce the value of the equipment and we refer to that as a provision so we'll see how that's going to to work out so what are we asked to do okay we're asked to do a few things this is a typical exam question okay i suppose you could say uh, and um, so and in practice this is what we would have to do if we were presented 
this information uh, in practice. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a number of things, a number of steps. We're going to prepare the nominal ledger for the year. So remember the nominal ledger is a collection of T accounts, uh, one for every figure in the, f in the final accounts, the profit and loss count and balance sheet. So we're going to make up a, uh, these T accounts and we'll, we'll put all these transactions into it, okay? And in the process then we'll be able to calculate the various figures that we're going to end up with in the, in the profit and loss count and balance sheet. And once we're done with the nominal ledger, okay once we're done uh, we'll we'll check our figures by doing this document here prepare the closing trial balance at the end of the year so we're going to make a list of all our debits and credits we'll see how that's done uh, so uh, we we'll see how that's done and then once we've got that done uh, we might do an adjustment or two and then we will have be able to do the profit and loss account for the year and the balance sheet at the end of the year so that's the that's the that's the plan so let's get into it, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is, I'll just do it down here. The first thing we're going to do is this nominal ledger, okay? And we're going to put these transactions into the nominal ledger. So let's write that in, nominal ledger. Add the nominal ledger. Okay. So what we said the nominal ledger was that it was a collection of T accounts, one for each figure in the profit and loss account and balance sheet. So what I might do is I might make some blank T accounts, okay? And we'll see how, how we get on with that. The first one and the most used one, the biggest one I suppose we need, the biggest bit of space that we're going to need to put our transactions in, sorry about the unstraight lines here, bit of a wobble. Uh, so, but we're going to open up a, a T account for each of the figures that are going to be in the bank account, sorry, each of our figures that are going to be in the balance sheet, uh, whatever they are. And we'll start with the bank because it needs, it's, you know, there's going to be a lot of transactions going through the bank account. And then what other ones will we have? Well, let's see what other figures we have in the balance sheet first. Let's say we're going to have debtors in the balance sheet. We'll put that in like that. So we call it a debtors account in our nominal ledger, a creditors account. So there's a lot of these, so I'll have to put them in one at a time. So creditors account. And then lastly, well then here on this screen, I suppose, the loan account. But of course, there's going to be other figures uh, in the balance sheet. So let's go down and see what they, they might be. And we put them in blank first. And we just, if we forget one, we can just put it in later. It's no big deal. So every figure that we think is going to end up in the balance sheet, so let's put them in. What else? Well, I suppose we're going to have to have a figure for capital. So I'll put that in. Okay. So this will be our capital account. Okay. And then what else will we have? Well, I suppose we're going to have an equipment account. Oops. Okay. Equipment account. So we'll have a T account for equipment. Okay. And also, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a provision for depreciation because we're going to calculate the depreciation on this equipment account. So I just put in uh, equipment and I'm just going to call it a provision for depreciation because we're going to show our, we're going to, for depreciation. I can't fit in the whole word depreciation. So I'll just put DEP. So there's our equipment, which is the asset, okay? And here's our provision for depreciation on that equipment, I suppose, uh, the reduction in the value of the asset. Okay, so we'll see how we, we, we treat those. Okay, anything else? Any other figures uh, that we're going to have in the, in the balance sheet? Well, there is, let's open up a T account for drawings. Well, maybe I'll put it up here, I have a space up here. So I'm going to put it beside the, the capital maybe. That might be a good idea because I suppose the capital, uh, the drawings, I suppose, is a reduction in the value of, of the capital. It's when the owner takes some of their capital back, however that capital got there. Okay, so the, there's two sources of capital really. One is when the owner invests money, that money is owed back to the owner. And also when the business makes profits, that money is owed back to the, to the owner. So the drawings would be would be the, the owner taking some of that money that arose e either through them investing in the business or through the business making profits and that will reduce the capital. Uh, but we'll have a, a separate figure for drawings. So I suppose we'd put a separate T account for drawings as well. 
any other figures then um no i think that's it i can't think if, if we if i think of any other figures that go on the balance sheet i'll just add it later but let's look at some of the profit and loss account figures so what figures do we find in the profit and loss account well it's sales okay uh there's purchases okay uh what else well i suppose there'll be various expenses and this there's a limited number of expenses i think we just have uh, uh, wages i think is one so we have a wages account and we'll have a uh, i think there's rent and rates i think as well rates are just um uh, just a kind of a local government tax paid to a local authority for uh, for various services uh, that are you know that you pay in relation to your premises and sometimes they're paid to the landlord along with the rent so very often we just group them together they're to do with the property uh, so we're very often grouped together in the same t account sometimes they're, they're done separately and because we have a loan that we know about uh, there's going to be an expense called loan interest okay loan interest account now as, as far as i know that they're the only ones but sure if I, i've forgotten one we can add one add one later so there's our um there's our that's our nominal ledger so that's our collection of t accounts okay collection of these t accounts now remember about these t accounts um okay and and each t account represents a figure in our nominal ledger now about these T accounts, remember that uh, each of these T accounts has a left hand side and a right hand side. So the left hand side we refer to as the debit side of all of these T accounts and the right hand side we, we, we call the credit side. So there's our debit side of each account and our credit side. So debit just means left, credit right. Sometimes you see DR instead of debit and CR instead of credit. But they all have this uh, side. Okay. And remember how we're going to use this nominal ledger. We're going to put our transactions that are listed up here, okay, listed up above. We're going to put each of these transactions into this nominal ledger. And we're going to use a system of double entry accounting, okay, double entry accounting. And double entry accounting says that for every transaction has two effects on the nominal ledger, okay. Every transaction, each of the transactions, we're going to go through them, have, has two effects on the nominal ledger, a debit effect and a credit effect. So we're going to put the amount of the transaction on the debit side of one account, left-hand side of one account, and the right-hand side of another account. And we're going to do that with each of our transactions uh, above. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, as I mentioned before, the, the problem with this for students of accounting is that to figure out, well, which account do we debit and which account do we credit? Okay, and that is uh, the issue. That's the, the difficulty, at least initially for students when they're new to this subject, as many of you are, I, I think. Okay, so uh, there's a way around this. Okay, there's a problem. Okay, the problem is which account, deciding which account to debit and which account to credit. And we said the solution to this problem, we, we, we referred to this in our previous uh, video lecture, I'll just go up a little bit here. We said, okay, the problem with double entry accounting, okay, the problem is which account to debit, which of these T accounts to debit, which account to debit, and which account to credit. Okay to credit sorry about the writing okay that's the problem okay and the solution to the problem is very easy okay the solution to this problem is as follows what we have to do if we don't know the answer to the question to if we can't solve the problem which account to debit and which account to credit we do two things the first thing is we ask a few questions we ask uh, three questions about the particular transaction questions about the transaction And we're going to ask that question about each of the transactions, okay, uh, that we have, uh, that we, 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 we looked at there. So we're going to ask three questions. And the three questions are, if you remember, question one is which two accounts are affected by the transaction? Which two accounts? And we'll, we'll, as we go down, we'll explain them. The second question we ask about the transaction is what type of accounts are they? 
or what type of figures uh, do these accounts represent, if you like. And we said there's only four types, okay, there's only four types of figures in accounting. Asset is the figure an asset, a liability, an expense, or a revenue. So we've got to know uh, what type of accounts each figure is. Okay, that's something we just have to, to learn, I suppose. And the third thing is, will the transaction increase or decrease? So will the accounts be increased? Will the accounts, these T accounts, be increased or decreased? Be increased. Okay, increased or decreased. Uh, due to the transaction okay due to the transaction and once you answer those three questions what do we do we do the second stage in this uh, solution okay to this conundrum as to what what account to debit and what what account to credit and that is to apply the rule of double entry accounting so apply the rule of double entry accounting entry accounting and the rule I think we, we, we outlined uh, previously, but I'll just do it again because we'll be referring to it constantly as we go through this video and looking at each individual uh, transaction. So it can be expressed kind of as a table, okay, as a table. Okay, and uh, we'll say that there's, okay, let's just draw the table and the various rows and columns that we have. Okay, so we said that there was four four types of accounts. There's asset, liability, expense, and revenue. So there are four types of accounts that we can have, and we said a transaction uh, will change these accounts in some way, perhaps. Okay, and uh, so it, when changing and changing a figure, you either can increase it or decrease it. And the rule of double entry accounting, this rule, okay, and it always applies, is that if a transaction increases an asset, we debit that asset T account. In other words, we put the amount of the transaction on the left hand side. And if if the transaction decreases the asset, we credit we credit it. And for a liability we do the opposite. Okay, credit and debit. Okay, so there's only one thing we can do. If you've only got two sides on the T account, you can either only debit it or credit it or else just leave it alone. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that. So if it's an expense, we debit to increase and credit to decrease. And if it's a revenue, we do the opposite. So that's the, that's the, 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 the solution. Okay, the solution to, to the, the problem, uh, which account to debit and which account to credit okay so that's that okay so let's do it now okay so we're going to enter the the uh, transactions into the into the nominal ledger and we'll see how it's done okay so let's do that so i'll just move across back to the nominal ledger here it is here so the first uh t i'm not going to keep referring to the uh to the question above i i, I think i'll remember what the what the transactions are uh, so the first transaction was that she lodged 130,000 uh, of her savings into the business. Okay, so we want, we know that that 130 is going to end up on the on the debit side of one account and on the credit side of another. So she's investing in the business. So the first question we ask ourselves is, well, which two accounts are affected if the owner of a business? puts money into the business now we know if she puts money into the business it's going to go into the bank account because this is the business bank account that she, this the current account of the business okay so we know that that money will end up in the business bank account so that's one one account is going to be affected and as a result she's going to be owed this money back okay the business is going to owe this money back so the other account that's affected is the capital okay now the next thing we've got to decide is okay what type of accounts are they now we always assume that the bank is an asset so i'll just put there beside it a for asset okay 
So the bank, we always consider it as an asset, although of course the, asset, the bank can turn into a liability if it's overdrawn. And if the bank is overdrawn, well, we say it's a liability if you want, okay? There's no big deal, it, we, we can, th th that will work too. And the capital, what kind of an account is capital? Well, the capital, the meaning of the word capital is money owed to the owner by the business. So as far as the business is concerned, it's money owed, so therefore it's a liability. So that's the answer to the second question. The third question is then, if the owner puts money into the business, will, the, will these accounts go up or down? So clearly the money in the bank, in the business bank account will go up because the um, because she's lodging money into the bank. And also the capital will go up because the business will owe money back to the owner. Okay, so we know now the, the answer to the three questions. So we're going to increase uh, at the bank, which is an asset, and we're going to increase the capital, which is a liability. We go to our rule, maybe just let's have a quick look at the rule again. Okay, let's just check out this rule again. There it is. So when we're increasing an asset, we debit, there it is there. And when we increase a liability, we credit. So we know now what to do with that 130,000, okay? Uh, we're going to put it in on the debit side of the bank and the credit side of the capital. And when you do that, when you, when you debit one account and credit another, we call it a journal entry, J-O-U-R-N-A-L entry, okay? And this is our first journal entry, so we put it in like this, okay? So we're going to say J1, okay? That's our journal entry number one. We put the name of the other account involved in this transaction, which is, of course, capital. And we put the amount of the transaction in, which is 130,000. So that's, that's what we do. And then with the capital, on the capital, we're going to credit the capital, and we do something similar. We say J1, put the name of the other account, which is the bank, and put the amount of the transaction, 130,000. So now what we've done is we've put the transaction, the, the, the transaction into the nominal ledger, or we say we've posted the journal entry. We use that term sometimes, we post a journal entry uh, to the nominal ledger. So that's done, okay? We can now go on to the next, uh, the next transaction, okay? and that is the purchase of equipment that's been paid. So again, we ask the three questions. Which two accounts are going to be affected if we purchase and pay for equipment? Well, one is the bank, okay? We're going to affect the bank and the other, which is an asset, and the other is equipment. Let's try and find the equipment where they put it. There is the equipment, and the equipment, of course, is also an asset. So I'll write beside it there that the equipment is an asset. So what's going to happen to these two assets? Are they going to go up or down? Well, if you pay for something, pay for equipment, the equipment's going to come down. Sorry, if you pay for anything, the bank will come down. And if you're buying equipment, the equipment will go up. So one asset, the equipment is going to increase and the other asset bank is going to decrease. So we go to our rule, okay? And the rule is clear with us. Whenever we, whenever we reduce an asset, we credit. Okay, so we're going to reduce the bank, so that's what we're going to put in next. So J2. So this is journal entry number two, and it's equipment. Now, I think I'll just put EQ because, you know, it's just, you know, I'm not going to fit it in otherwise. And the equipment was 160,000. Okay, so there it is there. So that's our credit, and now we put in our debit, okay. Uh, and we're going to debit the equipment, meaning put it on the left-hand side, and we'll do something similar, J2. This time it's the bank is the other figure, and it's 160. Okay. Right, does that, 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 that look like 160? Well, I'm not sure it does. Now, I'll just make it a bit more clear. Okay. So, okay, 1601. Two, three. Okay, so that's it. We've entered or posted that transaction into the nominal ledger. Okay, the next transaction, purchase of stock on credit. Okay, so again, we've got to figure out if you buy stock, what are the two accounts that are going to be affected? It won't affect the bank because these are on credit. Uh, so it will, 
purchases on credit are known as purchases so it's going to affect the purchases here okay and the purchases there is a figure we're going to find in the profit and loss account purchases is an expense so that's the answer to the second question i suppose what kind of an account is the purchases account and the other um when we buy goods on credit and don't pay for them in other words well we owe someone the money okay we owe someone uh, we owe someone uh, money and that is a creditor okay so the two accounts affected will be purchases and creditors and the creditors of course is a liability money we owe our suppliers so will they go up or down well we're purchasing more stock okay so we owe more money so the creditors will go up and when we purchase more stock we purchase more so the purchases figure is going to go up so the expense that goes up the rule says we debit and the liability that goes up the rule says we credit okay so let's do that let's do the credit first as i'm here and this is j3 i think okay let me see if i'm right here j3 so j3 is our third journal entry and it's purchases is the other account and the amount of that is uh, 380,000 so buying tr we bought three she bought the business bought 380,000 euros worth of stuff that means there was a debt owing for that stuff so there's our liability and we go down to our expense then the, the purchases figure down here and we put in there j3 and uh, creditors okay and the creditors then were what do we say it was three uh, three hundred and eighty thousand okay so that's it okay so that's that one done the next one is she borrowed money now there's not that many different types of transactions in accounting to be honest uh, this is mainly them there may be a few others but uh, essentially most businesses the vast majority of businesses will have these transactions and not many many more so we're, when we've got a term loan is the next thing. So a term loan or just a loan. A term is just refers to the, the to how long the loan is for. Is it for three years or, or whatever. So if we borrow money, if, if the business borrows money, what's going to happen? Well, what, they, what we're going to do is we're going to create a loan. Okay, there's no loan there at the moment. So we'll create a loan because of this transaction. We're borrowing 140,000. And what will you do with that money? Well, you'll stick it in the bank account here you lodge it into the bank account so that you can write checks or make payments because you can't normally make payments out of a loan account okay so you take the money out of the loan account put it into um into your your current account and that's what we're going to do okay that's what she's going to do so there's the two accounts involved in this transaction okay bank and loan okay what type of accounts are they well the loan of course whoops uh, the loan of course is a liability so I'll just put L there for liability and we already know the bank is an asset okay so there are two accounts so will they go up or down well we're going to put the loan money into the bank so the bank will go up and we borrow the loan we borrow we borrow the money uh, in respect of the loan so the loan is going to go up as well so one asset is going to go up the bank a loan is going to go up a liability what does the rule say well we can refer back to the rule I'm not going to jump to it but I we think we know that when we increase an asset it is a debit so this is j4 so j4 journal entry 4 is the loan and the loan we said was 140 and then we go over to the loan account we're going to credit the loan account j4 the other account is the bank 140 that's grand okay so that's in in our nominal ledger now we've posted that in our nominal ledger the next transaction okay is credit sales okay credit sales made during the year six hundred and ten thousand. now when we make sales on credit we create a debt okay we create a debt this time the debt is owed to us okay and a debt owed to us is known as uh, debtors so we're going to involve the debtors account here because we're selling the goods on credit and the other account is down below and it's the sales account obviously so the two accounts involve debtors and sales what kind of an account is the debtors account i just write in here what it is i think we know it's an asset okay so i just write and make sure we're clear as to what each of these what, what type of accounts each of these things are so we're going to adjust a, 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 a an asset called debtors 
and the sales then let's go down to the sales and have a look at it where is it there it is there so the sales is a is a is a revenue okay so they're usually our only revenue but sometimes there are other ones like you might have rental income if you have a if the business has, has property they might rent it out or if you've got money in a in a in a deposit account uh, you, the, the income the interest you earn would be a revenue as well but usually the main certainly the main revenue will always be the sales of goods okay and the sales of goods we said in this case was credit sales 610 so will these accounts increase or decrease that's the third question well sales will go up the more we sell the bigger the sales figure and the debtors will go up so so the asset debtors will go up as well so the rule tells us when we increase a revenue it's a credit and when we increase an asset it's a debit so let's do this this is j5 okay so j5 we're going to put it in here on the credit side the other account is debtors so we're going to put that word in and the amount we said is 610,000 in the whole year that's what she invoiced out to customers that's what she sold them and we're going to debit the other account which is the debtors let's go up here there it is and this is J uh, J5 and uh, sales 610 okay so that's that the next transaction in our list of transaction was an expense okay rent and rates were paid okay now we know if we pay anything it we're saying it comes out of the bank because we were told all our payments are going to come out of the bank so it'll be one account that's affected will be the bank and we have an account for rent and rates okay we have an account let's go down to it and our account for of, for rent and rates where is it there it is there too far okay so there's our rent and rates the rent and rates of course is an expense so we treat it as an expense okay so we've an expense then called rent and rates and we've a, a, an asset called bank okay because we're going to pay it uh, uh, through the bank so what will we do are they going to go up well the rent and rates is going to go up is that the one i'm on now let me see am i lose track this is j6 yeah so we're going to increase the rent and rates okay uh, therefore the rule tells us it's an expense we debit so let's put that in j6 bank and the bank is sorry and the rent and rates is 90,000 and then we have to go up to the bank uh, we go up to the bank and we put in here j6 and I'll just put R and R for rent and rates because I can't fit rent and rates in so rent and rates 90,000 now you can see it's very easy to make a mistake in this okay you might put the, the amount you might do two debits and two credits or you might forget one of the debits or forget one of the credits really easy to make a mistake and that's one of the reasons when we're finished that we do the close and trial balance because it's so easy to, to make a mistake here but anyway let's bash on the next transaction is wages were paid 150,000 so we're going to do the wages very like the rent and rates because it's an expense so we're going to put it in here in the bank just for the same reasons that we did the um, did the rent and rates because we're making a payment for wages so we put in there the wages and the wages are 150 and uh, like when we went down to the rent and rates and put the 90 in on the debit side we do the same with the wages okay so we're going to put it in there j7 so we do all all expenses in the same way so j7 bank so once you know how to do one expense uh, the others just uh, are done in the same way so that's 150,000. okay so that's wages the next transaction the next transaction in our list is uh, cash received from debtors okay cash received from debtors so this is to do with the um, the sales okay so we go up to our debtors okay so these debtors here they we sold them 610,000 euros worth of goods and um, we're told that they during the year they paid us 480,000 so one of the accounts affected clearly is going to be the debtors okay you know they're, they're going to pay up uh, so they won't owe us as much as a result and the money that we get we're going to put in the bank okay so the two accounts are bank and debtors 
okay with this money so what's going to happen to the bank will it go up well first of all we know what they are they're both assets okay they're both asset type accounts so will the bank go up or down of course it'll go up okay it'll go up so we call that j8 so the rule tells us that um when we increase any any asset uh, debtors uh, we put it in on the debit side so that's 480 and we put the 480 over here because we want to reduce this asset debtors and this is j8 and um, bank and the bank is 480 okay okay so you can see there there's a sales on that side and um, you know 610 and there's our what we were paid so the difference between them will be the balance now remember in this case it's a first year so there was no opening balance we didn't owe any money sorry the, the customers didn't owe any money at the start of the year if they did we'd put in here balance at the start of the year we put it in there above the 610 same way with the bank if there was money in the bank at the start if there was a previous year it wasn't the first year we put the balance in here if there was money in in the bank and we put the balance over here if there was uh, an overdraft okay so that's that so that's our cash from debtors we're nearly there payments to creditors for stock okay so it's a payment is that and which was it payments to creditors for stock two hundred and forty thousand. so that's a payment so we're going to use the bank and we're going to use the creditors because we're paying off these guys um, and so we're going to they're the two accounts so one asset and one liability will the asset go up or down well we're making a payment the assets going to come down so we credit and the liability is going to come down so we debit okay so this is j9 so j9 creditors and the creditors were told payments to creditors for the stock 240 okay and over here then we're going to reduce the creditors it's a liability so we debit j9 bank the other account uh, 240,000 okay the next one drawings now the drawings is a strange one okay it's money that's been paid to the owner okay so the business is paying the, the owner 60,000 so it's going to come out of the bank so I think we're easy enough on that that side of it okay uh, the bank but then we have a T account for drawings and we've got to work out, okay, what type of an account is the drawings account? Now it's not an expense. It's not wages, we said, it's not an expense. It's a reduction in the value of capital, okay? Capital is a liability. So drawings is the opposite to a liability. It's a reduction in the value of a liability. So whatever the rule says about liabilities and capital, uh, the rule will tell us to do the exact opposite for drawings okay for drawings so we'll do, we'll do, we'll do you know so I suppose one way to look at how I look at drawings then is a reduction in the value of a of a liability called capital so I refer to it as a minus liability just in this context here so that we know what to do by following the rule so we'll do the the opposite okay when we're we're, we're, we're you know, putting amounts in here in the drawings account we'll treat it as if it was the opposite of capital so minus capital so when we're increasing it instead of crediting it like we would with capital we'll debit it and when we're reducing it instead of what we would do with capital uh, with a liability okay we would debit normally to reduce a liability here we will we will credit to reduce the liability so that's what we're going to do okay so okay so what are we going to do we're, we're there's there's drawings of 60,000 so at the moment it's zero so the drawings are going up so we're increasing a minus liability well we debit them so what is this uh, j10 we're going to call this so j10 and the other account is the bank we're going to use and it's 60,000 okay and let's go up to the bank then and we will um we put it in the bank account so j10 i'll go up a bit further where is it so we're going to credit the bank because we're, we're reducing the bank remember we're taking the money out of the business bank account and giving it to the owner and that's the drawings and it's sixty thousand. 
So there's our debit and credit. Now, once you know one of them, the other has to be the, you know, once you know one is a debit, you know, the other has to be a credit and, and vice versa. So only two more transactions then, and that is the, the term loan interest and the term loan repayments. Let's do the interest first. This is the interest charged by the lender, okay? And we're not going to, it's not going to affect the bank because this is we're just recording the the charging of the interest not the paying of it yet um so when we ch when when a, a lender charges interest what they do is they just add it on they add the interest onto the loan so this is j um j11 so we're going to add it onto the loan the loan is a liability the rule says when you increase a liability you credit so we're going to put it in here this is our 11th journal entry so I just put in loan interest, squeeze it in there. The loan interest we're told is 9,000. So that's what happens. We're increasing the loan by 9,000. Now, if this business didn't make any repayments during the year, uh, the loan balance at the end of the year would be the 140 plus the nine, 149, okay? So that's, that's what you do with loan interest that's been charged, okay? So, but what's the debit? Well, the debit is, uh, because loan interest is an expense, okay, it has its own T account down here. Let's just try and find it. Way down. There it is there, loan interest. Now loan interest, I like the wages, I just put that in. The wages are an expense. The rent and rates were an expense. And the loan interest is an expense as well. And um, the rule is, when you increase an expense, you debit. So we put that in there. So it's J11. And the other account was the loan and it's 9,000. So there you go, okay? So that's that. Okay, the very last transaction now is, um, is uh, the term loan repayments. So we're now making a physical cash payment, if you like, in respect of the loan. So there it is there. So what are we going to do? Okay, we're going to, when you make a loan repayment, well, it's a payment, okay? It comes out of the bank. Okay, so we're going to, it's going to affect the bank and it's also going to affect the loan when you make a loan repayment. So the loan is going to come down when you make a loan repayment. And if you're taking the money out of the bank, the bank will come down as well. So an asset is going to come down, that's a credit, and a liability is going to come down, that's a debit. So this is J12. Okay, so I just put in the name of the other account, loan, and the amount is 20,000. Okay. And here on this side then, uh, on the loan account, we're, we're reducing the loan because the repayment reduces the loan balance, 12 and it's bank, and it's 20,000, so just put it in there. Okay, so there are our transactions entered into the nominal ledger, posted to the nominal ledger on its respective side, using double entry accounting, each transaction goes in twice. Okay, there's one further thing I want to do in this nominal ledger, and that is um, uh, put in the adjustment for depreciation. So let's talk about depreciation for a minute. Let's go up to the question, see what it tells us about depreciation. Well, there it is there. Depreciation is to be calculated on the cost at a rate of 20% per annum. So we're going to calculate the depreciation as follows. So the depreciation for the year will be equal to the cost, okay, uh, of the fixed asset multiplied by 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 20 percent and of course the cost was well what was it we bought the equipment for 160,000 160,000 multiplied by 20 percent or a fifth why 20 percent well tw this first of all the method there's a number of different methods of depreciation one of them uh, you, you get a percentage of the cost we refer to this as the straight line method of depreciation and every year you just get 20% of the original cost and you treat it as an expense, you know, and you reduce the value of the asset by that amount. There are other methods as well that we'll, we'll talk about later, okay? I'm not going to uh, talk about it now. But uh, so that's it. So we pick 20% then because, because we, we assume or we're, uh, we, have, we estimate that this, the, the useful life of this uh, equipment is going to be five years. So we're going to knock, if you like, a, a fifth off the cost of it, off the value of it every year uh, and reduce its value by a fifth every year because it's five years. Fifth is 20%, of course. So what is that? 
160 multiplied by 20 percent I think is let's hope it is 32,000 I think hope that's right that 5 into 16 is 3 5 twos are 10 I think that's right okay so that's our depreciation for the year 32 now how do we do that well I've I've, I've opened up a, a provision for depreciation account if you remember there it is there and uh, we said a provision is a reduction in the value of an asset a fixed asset okay or, or a, it's a reduction in the value of any asset i suppose okay so there's the cost of our fixed asset now we're not going to adjust the equipment account the only thing that will adjust the equipment account is when we buy new equipment we might we put it in there it'll increase it so increasing an asset we debit and if we sell the, this equipment maybe we're fed up with it or we we we, we want to replace it uh, we'd credit it because that would reduce the asset okay so that's the only thing that will affect the equipment account what we call additions when we buy equipment and disposals when we sell equipment but there's no additions other than the original equipment in this case and there's no disposals so we do our depreciation over here in a separate account just for the you know uh, for you know to keep it keep it separate and this provision for depreciation account I suppose to describe it it's a reduction in the value of equipment and you know in the same way as we talked about drawings being a reduction in the value of of a, of a liability capital we can call this a minus asset so whatever the rule tells us to do with an asset we do the opposite with a minus asset so how are we going to treat this well this is an adjustment it's not a transaction like when we're doing our depreciation calculation we're not transacting with anyone outside the business so we treat it we do it in a in a different way okay so that 32000 okay it's uh, we're going to increase this provision first of all by 32000 it's a minus asset so we do the opposite of an asset so what we're going to do is we're going to credit it okay so we're going to put the 32000 in there on the credit side okay like that because we're increasing a minus asset if we're increasing an asset we debit now we credit the provision for depreciation and unusually because it's an adjustment and not a and not a transaction what we debit is in fact the profit and loss account okay now we're not showing the profit and loss account here uh, but we can imagine that the profit and loss account is another T account I'm not going to show it here but we'll do it later and that's what we're going to debit so that's the way we do it so we put in the name of the opposite account p and l okay and we don't really call it a journal entry i won't number it as a journal entry uh, but that's the adjustment okay so there's our credit and the debit is in the in the p and l okay so that's as simple as that okay so that's it that's all our transactions and our adjustment that we wanted to put in here in our in our nominal ledger what do we do next well the next thing we do is we find a single figure we need to get a single figure for each of these t accounts so that we can put these figures in the profit and loss count and balance sheet so we need to balance off these accounts or close these accounts in some way so let's do that okay so let's do the bank account so we we want to find out the balance on the bank account so what we do is we add up both sides and see what they come to we will add up these three figures first and they come to 750 i'll just put in just 750 there okay when you add these three figures together and when you add all these six figures okay that comes to 720,000 euro so i just put 720 okay well maybe k i put k over here okay so there's 750 going into the bank went into the bank during the year and 720 came out of the bank during the year what's left in the bank there was no opening balance because this is a first year in business so we add we what we do is we pick the highest figure and the highest figure of the two sides is 750 and we make that the total of both sides so there's the total 750 both sides now this the left hand side is fine it adds up but the right hand side the credit side doesn't so we have to put in a missing figure or a balancing figure and the missing figure of course is 30,000 so I'm just going to put in 30,000 like that now both sides add up to the same 750 and I'll say that that's the balance on the 30th of November 30th of November 2020 that is the balance okay 
and we do one final thing then we bring down the balance on the 1st of the 12th okay 20 okay 1st of December and that's the balance and the balance is 30 hope I've done that right now I think so okay so there's our there's our T account for bank balanced off so that's the figure we're going to put in the balance sheet we put all the balances in the balance sheet that's why we call it a balance sheet it's a list of balances really okay so there's our first balance that's going to go in the balance sheet let's look at some of the others okay there's debtors left hand side 610 right hand side 480 okay add it up not too difficult so just put in there the sixth put in the highest number 610 on both sides 610 okay that's the total on both sides and the balance the, the difference between the two of course is 130 and we call that the balance to, at the 30th of the 11th 20 the balance owed by the customers is 130 now i've no room to bring it down so i won't bother okay the next one then is uh, creditors okay we do something similar add up both sides okay add up both sides the right hand side the credit side is the highest side so we make that the total 380 okay so the missing figure obviously is going to be on this side and the missing figure is 140,000 and we call that the balance so at the uh, the 30th of the 11th 20 uh, the balance is so the money that's owed to creditors we, we bring it down over here maybe i have room here first to the 12th uh, 20 the balance starting off next year is 140. and so credit balance you see because it's a liability over here it would have been a debit balance for, uh, in the debtors because it's an asset and a debit balance over here in the bank because it's an asset so the loan is next okay so we balance off the loan so we can see it's clear what's the the highest side so let's add up both sides uh, this is 149 and the other side is only um 20. so we make it 149 okay and the missing figure is obviously 129 is it um yep 129 of course and that's our balance i won't bother with the date because uh, i just can't fit it in okay the next figure then that goes in the balance on the drawings well there's only one figure there i don't think there's any need to be bringing down adding up two sides and bringing down balances it's pretty clear that's a that's a debit balance okay and it's a debit balance because it's the opposite of a liability a minus liability same thing with the capital I'm not going to bother you know you could put a balance over here add up both sides you know what i mean and uh sure what's the point life is too short so we want we leave it um we leave it like that okay the next thing is the equipment clearly a balance on the debit side okay uh okay uh so i'm not going to bring it down this one's a bit different i'm, I'm going to bring this one down because uh we add up both sides because it's uh we'll see because this does you know anyway i'm going to, I'm going to do this one so there's a the p l okay so both sides want to add up both sides pick the figures biggest uh, figure and it's obviously 32,000 okay and uh, make 32,000 the total of both sides okay and the missing figure is obviously the balance so on the 30th of the 11th 20 the balance god I won't fit it in now 32,000 okay and we bring down the balance on the other side so on the 1st of the 12th um, 20 uh, the balance it's a credit balance because it's a minus asset okay 32,000 so when we're I, I wanted to bring that one down and maybe highlight the fact that there's a balance here okay and when we're when we're doing our balance sheet we're going to include 160 as the cost there's our debit and the balance on the uh, provision for depreciation is what we refer to as the aggregate depreciation so that's our aggregate or our depreciation to date okay and we're going to put that figure in the balance sheet as well okay and this figure here okay that figure there 
is going to go into our profit and loss account as an expense. Okay, so to that figure there will be the expense. See, it's in the P&L account, so it has to be an expense or a revenue. So in this provision for depreciation accounts, we're going to get two figures out of, uh, to go into our profit and loss account and balance sheet. So the P&L figure there will be in the, in the profit and loss account as an expense, and the balance down here will be in our balance sheet as a, uh, as a, as a reduction in the value of an asset. Okay, so that's that. Bit complicated, we're going to do a whole video lecture on, uh, on depreciation, and hopefully it'll become clearer when we do that. Okay, so there are all the assets done and all the liabilities done. Now we go to the profit and loss account figures. And profit and loss account figures, we don't really end up with a, bal with a balance on these. Well, okay, sometimes we do, but we'll see that later. Okay, but what are we going to do with that sales figure? Okay, well, with the balances, with, with the assets and liabilities, they come forward year after year, you know what I mean? So that bank account will continue for years, the debtor's account will continue for years, but the sales, the expenses and the revenues don't. We, we just have them for a year and we close them off for the year. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that sales figure to the P&L or the trading account more correctly maybe, but I'll just put it on in the P&L account. So we're going to get rid of it out of here. So we're going to reduce it, if you like, by debiting it. And we're going to credit the uh, profit and loss account, which you've just got to imagine that it's a T account. Okay, so that's 610. Okay, so that's closed off there. So the, the sales figure is still 610, I suppose, but we're transferring it, if you like, into the, into the profit calculation. Okay, and we're going to do that with the purchases as well. Okay, so we're going to transfer that to the profit and loss account, 380,000. So we're going to, if you like, credit the purchases here, debit the profit and loss account. And we're going to be finished with that figure then. It's not going to be carried forward like the assets to next year, like the assets and liabilities. We do the same with the other expenses. Okay, so the wages again, it's going to be transferred to the P&L. P&L account, 150,000. So there's no balance left on that. We'll see later, sometimes maybe there will be balances. So for example, if you still owed somebody, if you hadn't paid all of this wage, these wages and there's some owing, well then there might be a, a, a liability for it or something, a balance on that account, but not in this example. And we're going to get rid of this rent and rates, P&L, and transfer it if you like to the profit and loss account. Okay. And lastly, then we do the same with the interest and uh, 9,000 and we balance it off. No balance is left on these uh, revenue and expense accounts. So that's it. We've balanced off all the accounts in one way or another. We've either got a balance or we've closed off the account if it's a, a revenue or a, an expense. So that's that part of it done. Okay. The next thing we have to do is we've got to do the nominal, so we've got to do the closing trial balance. So let's have a look at that. So I'll move over here to do it, I think. And I'll just go down a bit. So let's see what the closing trial balance looks like. Okay. Now, this is not a very important document. Okay. It's just to see did we make a mistake? Because it is so easy to make a mistake on this. So uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So we're going to do a closing uh, trial balance. Okay, and it's at a particular date. So I'll just say at uh, the end of the year, 30th of the 11th, uh, 2020. Now this is not published like the, uh, like the, like the uh, profit and loss count and balance sheet. It is just a list really of debits debit balances or debit figures, okay, uh, or credit balances or credit figures. So a list of debits. So in, in other words, we're going to get a single figure from each of the T accounts. Are they a debit or are they a credit? Put them in in any order you want, okay, doesn't really matter. So let's put the bank in first. So is the bank, is there money in the, sorry, I forgot to, before I do that, let's get rid of that. Just want to emphasize the fact that the debits will either be assets, okay, and or they will be expenses, A and D, okay. 
that that's remember that that ties in with the rule the rule said when we when we increase an asset it's a debit when we increase an expense it's a debit and on the credit side they will be um, liabilities and revenues L and R okay liabilities rule tying in with the rule increase a liability it's a credit increase a, a revenue it's a credit so liabilities and revenues are always credits assets and expenses are always debits and everything's going to be in money so we do it that way okay now we can put in the bank so question is is the bank an asset or a liability is it a debit or a credit and of course the bank we said was 30,000 and it's on the debit side there's money in the bank so that's 30,000 the debtors are next and the debtors to balance in the debtors account 130 okay the next figure again any order creditors so the creditors is a liability so we put it in over here on the right hand side 140 the next one we can put in is the loan liability so we put it in over here 129,000 next one is the capital money owed to the owner at the well the money that was invested i suppose and owed back to the owner so it's a liability 130,000 next one is the equipment now we've two we have a number of figures to put in for the equipment really the first is the balance on the equipment account which is the cost of the equipment that was purchased during the year uh, or that is still there that was purchased okay so it's the balance still remaining at the end of the year 160,000 the original cost of it and the depreciation to date is a minus asset we said okay the provision for depreciation that's our aggregate depreciation these two figures will go in the balance sheet but there'll be another figure then which is depreciation of the equipment which is the expense remember we said depreciation of the equipment and that's an expense so it goes in there now in the first year these two figures are going to be the same okay the depreciation for the year is 32 and the the aggregate depreciation is 32 but next year let's say we don't buy any new equipment uh, next year we'd have depreciation of 32 but the aggregate depreciation will be 64 because it'll be two years depreciation so the balance on the provision account goes up every year whereas the current year's depreciation well will be just be 20 percent of the cost okay hope that that'll become clear as i say later when we do when we do a video lecture on depreciation the next thing the next figure we have that's equipment is drawings okay is the drawings and we said that the drawings was a minus liability the opposite of capital a reduction in the value of capital so it's going to be a debit the next one is sales so you can see there's no it doesn't make any sense to be adding assets and expenses together it's a meaningless result okay we're going to add all these together assets and expenses that's just doesn't make any sense okay the answer is meaningless all we all we care about is all the assets equal all, all the debits equal all the credits the sales are 610 okay next one purchases okay the purchase is 380 the next one rent and rates okay what figure do we have there 90,000 that's the the only figure in the T account wages the figure we have there is 150 they're both expenses okay 150,000 and the last one I hope I haven't missed any now uh, the loan interest okay okay the loan interest is 9,000 now did I do any of those wrong I wonder it's so easy to do it wrong so um, now I'm just going to add them up now I've done this already so I hope I haven't uh, I hope I've missed one now but when I did it before the answer I got was 1041 000 and on the credit side it's supposed to be the same 1041 uh, 000 now, I hope that does add up that I haven't missed one or put one on the wrong side but if I did this correctly that's that's what the answer is supposed to be 
So we'll have to say that I, that that's it. We're happy enough so that we didn't make a mistake. And uh, that's the close and trial balance. Now in an exam situation, you'll notice if you're looking at past exam um, questions, some exam questions start at this point. Okay, they start with a closing trial balance and they might give you some ad additional information and you are asked to do the profit and loss count and balance sheet. But here, what we did, this was the end point, I suppose, uh, of the, um, of the of so far of, uh, of what we've been doing the, with the nominal ledger and so on. So this is the, the stage there. Okay, so we've, uh, we, 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 it looks as if we haven't made a mistake. Now there are mistakes that this doesn't pick up, of course, uh, you know, if you just debit the wrong account, uh, that mistake won't be picked up by this um, by this closing trial balance. But let's say we're okay. So the next thing we've got to do is the final accounts. Now we've got to do accounting adjustments as well. But um, uh, but uh, you know, I'll do that as I go along. There's only one further accounting adjustment, and that's the closing stock. So just to finish it off, I think I'll do the accounts now for for Brenda Smith using the figures in that close and trial balance and we'll see how that goes. So try and do it as quick as I can. So we're, we're Brenda Smith. Now this is the one that's published at least in a limited way. You know, it's uh, you might give it, Brenda might give this to her bank. To you know, the bank might ask for her profit and loss count and balance sheet uh, or she might give it to the tax authorities if they ask for it. So profit and loss account. loss account and it's for the year ending now do I have enough space to do let's hopes for the best for the year ending uh, 31st 30th of November I'll just go 11 2020 okay so that's what we're at and it's everything's in money okay first figure we're going to take these figures just straight out of the close and trial balance don't need to go back to the T accounts uh, so that'll be that. So the first figure out of the close and trial balance is the sales figure, 610. So we're going to try and calculate the profitability. Next is the cost of those sales. Now remember there's a formula, opening stock. Let's see, I hope I have enough room now. Did I leave myself enough room? The opening stock is zero. The purchases uh, were straight out of the trial balance, 380,000. Add them together, we get 380. And this is where we're going to do our, our accounting adjustment because we're not going to include all the purchases as an expense because some of them haven't been paid, have, haven't been sold on yet. So we're going to deduct, if you like, the closing stock. I'll just put it in like this, the closing stock. And the closing stock was 65,000. So we're going to take that away. We're not going to include that part of the purchases. Uh, and we're only going to include the cost of the goods that were sold. So we're going to say cost of sales. And the cost of sales, here there's kind of two columns here, not very well done unfortunately, but 315, they're not really under each other, 315,000. And we take that from the, the sales up above there and uh, we get the gross profit figure. Okay, so gross profit. Okay, and the gross profit is 295. So that, that's what we call the trading account, okay? Part of the profit and loss account. Now we put in any other expenses that we have. And it's pretty straightforward what the expenses are. Straight out of the trial balance, the wages figure is 150,000. The rent and rates, I just put R&R, &R, uh, 90,000. The other expense was loan interest. Okay, that's all I can fit in. Loan interest. And the loan interest was nine, I think. Okay, put in the nine. And lastly was the depreciation of equipment. Okay, and depreciation equipment we said was 32,000. So we treat that as an expense. Okay, add them up, okay and we get 281,000 even. 
and we subtract that because we're always subtracting expenses from from revenues okay and we get the net profit uh, for this sole trader which is just 14,000 and for a sole trader that's the end of the story okay we don't go any further it's not like when we were doing the the accounts for a limited company that we had the appropriations remember that for tax and dividends we always just finish it here we don't include any tax and there's no dividends of course so that's our profit and loss account so what are we going to do with that profit well who does who owns that profit well the owner does so we're going to add it on to the capital in the balance sheet so i'm just going to do the balance sheet beside it here so you can get it all in one okay so let's do that. So we're going to Brenda Smith again. Okay, that's the name. And then we've got balance sheet. Okay, I'll just maybe here, balance sheet. As at, that's the expression, as at. Uh, I'll just move a little bit to the uh, to the right, I think. Oop, wrong way. Okay, uh, as at the 31st, uh, not the 30th of November uh, 2020. Okay, so that's the name of the business, name of the document, and the date it relates to. So, first thing uh, fixed assets. And we're going to put in the cost and uh, the depreciation to date tight squeeze here and the net book value I'll just put in NBV so everything's in money so again we're going to get all the figures from the close and trial balance okay close and trial balance so the first figure is equipment And the equipment then cost 160 originally, uh, 160,000, 32,000 of um, depreciation to date. So that leaves a net book value when you subtract those 128,000. Okay, we're not really interested anymore in the cost or in the depreciation. The figure we're interested in is the, the net book value. Next thing, current assets. We put a line underneath it and we put them in in this particular order we always put them in in this order the stock now remember we had the stock there the close and stock that's the same as this figure here okay so this is our adjustment we put it in twice there's a debit and a credit okay here's the credit okay because we reduced it from the purchases which was a debit okay so there's our credit uh, adjustment and here's our debit adjustment putting it in as an asset okay so that's how we do it so it's 65,000 the next one is the debtors again straight out of the trial balance we're finished with the T accounts we don't really have to refer back to the T accounts anymore uh, 130,000 and the money in the bank is 30,000 add them up and we get 225 so there are cash and near cash asset, assets, okay? Asset, assets that are gonna turn into cash shortly or cash already, okay? That's what they are. The next one now, for a sole trader, we normally call uh, these uh, short-term liabilities, we call them current liabilities. We don't call them, uh, remember we said in a, for a limited company, we call them creditors amounts due within one year. But for sole traders, we normally just keep calling them uh, current liabilities and there's only one and that is the creditors. Again, we get these figures from the from the closing trial balance, 140. And there's no others, uh, and so we just add them up, and that's 140. Okay, the next thing is we're going to subtract these two figures, that one there, the current assets and the current liabilities, and we call the difference net current assets. Okay, the net current, put a line underneath it. So when we, now, oh, it's still not, uh, it's 
not great so I'm not putting them under the proper lines I'm just going to go out to the to the right a little bit again okay so the net current assets then uh, is uh, 80 I think it's 85,000 okay so again there's kind of um, three three columns here there's one column okay there's a middle column here and then there's the right hand column there so the 85 is under the one, 128 okay and let's um, let's add them because they're both asset type figures net current assets and uh, fixed assets net book value our asset type figures okay so when we add the two together we get 213 okay so that's where we're at at the moment now we have the long-term liabilities which is the loan okay put a line underneath it and we put in the loan okay and the balance on the loan t account which we have in the um closing trial balance we put in the closing brand balance 129 now this is a liability so remember in the balance sheet we always subtract liabilities from assets so when we do that we get 84,000 and that's kind of the end of that that's the assets minus the liabilities and we call it total net assets now don't mix up net current assets the difference between current assets and current liabilities and total net assets what I'm doing now which is all the assets minus all the liabilities okay so that's our assets minus liabilities and in a balance sheet then the last part is to do with the owner okay is to do with the owner so let's see what the last part we normally give it a name and it's called the financed by section remember with a company we call it capital and reserves but for a sole trader this is what we, we say and uh, what do we have in here okay well the first thing is what what we're trying to figure out what the what was owed to the owner at the end of the year so what do we include well we include what the owner invested and we call that capital well I, there's a number of names for it but I think I'm going to use the term capital introduced he she introduced money into the business that's sometimes what it's referred to so 130,000 okay now there are certain things that increase the capital and certain things that reduce the capital two of each type okay the two things that increase the capital are capital introduced that's one that increases the capital and also net profit and the net profit there it is there okay so that's where we put it in there we add it on to the to the capital okay and the net profit was 14,000 only okay now the next figure that we put in sorry the, the, now they're the two things that increase capital okay increase the money owed to the owner when the owner puts money in and the business makes a profit the profit belongs to the owner so those two things added together are what are, the, are what capital is made up of and there are two things that reduce capital and one is the drawings so we're going to reduce this capital figure by the amount of the drawings and we know that the drawings were 60,000 now I'm going to put the 60,000 in brackets to make sure we, we were clear that it's going to be reduced now in the previous examples we had net profit here and we we drawings and we subtracted them and we got retained profit but here she actually took out more than she than the profits so she's taken actually some of the capital out as well so I, I'm not going to calculate a retained profit figure so okay so we add up the three sorry the other thing that reduces uh, capital of course is if a loss was made so you can't make a profit and a loss so you make a profit or a loss so there was no loss made in this case so a loss would reduce uh, the capital and when what we end up with then is the closing capital of uh, 84,000 so that 84,000 is the closing capital the capital at the end of the year which equals here the, to, the total net assets okay if you like I won't make it so I'm not going to write in their closing capital but in fact that's what it is okay very often you don't see it you just leave it it's you see it just hanging there without a without a, a name if you like uh, you, you, we know it's the closing capital the, cal the capital at the balance sheet date 84,000 okay so that's that's the end of that okay so we've done everything that we were required to do by the question okay so we've done the two 
the balance sheet and the profit and loss account there. We did the closing trial balance. We did the T account, okay, uh, and so on. Okay, sorry, went too far. So this is nominal ledger video lecture number two. So I'll, I'll just go over to the original question and here it is. Uh, and so we've done, this is Brenda Smith. I'll just move up a little bit here, Brenda Smith. And uh, that's what we were given, of course, all these transactions. And um, what we were asked to do, I'll just go through that again. So we were asked to prepare the, uh, the nominal ledger. Okay, we were asked to prepare the nominal ledger, which we did, all those T accounts. Okay, we balanced off all the T accounts. We took a single figure from each T account and put it in the, the closing trial balance. And once we were confident that balanced, that all the debits equal all the credits, we were then ready to do the profit and loss account and balance sheet. And uh, that's what we did. So we did the profit and loss count, 14,000. How did the business perform? Financial performance is the profitability, 14,000. And the solvency measure and, uh, and so on is in the balance sheet, um, the assets and the liabilities at the end of the, uh, so the financial position, if you like, is shown by the balance sheet. So that's that. So I'll talk to you in the next video. All the best. Take care.